النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and she said I want my kid to be your servant and I will leave him with you and make dua for him so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase his wealth his children and to make extend actually his time in this life and to forgive him that's why he's probably find he's the last one of the sahaba maybe the, the people who witnessed the two qibla he died the last one of them he passed away in, in, in basra they said 90 to 93 years after Hijrah. That gives him like more than 100 years. So SubhanAllah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala answered the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And before he dies, he said, I have from my children more than 100. They, they count around like 129, maybe. SubhanAllah. And they said he was having some gardens, and this garden gives the fruit twice a year, while all the other gardens, it gives one once a year. So they said, SubhanAllah, it's all with the blessings, with the barakah of the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, he reported the hadith, and he reports almost 2,200 hadiths in Bukhari and Muslim, almost 200, 180 hadith in Bukhari and Muslim both. And in, in Bukhari alone, like it's not in, in Muslim, 80, and in Muslim alone, it's not narrated by, not reported by Bukhari, 90. So, so all together around 400, almost or 350. He was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, serving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he has a lot of situation with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe one time we should do one halaqa about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used he used to teach Anas bin Malik because when his mother brought him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treat him as a son and we should know how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treats his new servant because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he's the example for us and now we really need this example how, how to deal with our children in these days SubhanAllah even though he stayed with the Prophet Sallallahu from the age of 10 to the age of 20 which means 10 years he said when I have been with the Prophet Sallallahu he never ever say off to me he never complained he never say something bad about me and he never punished me so I was like really thinking how the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam deal with with young people SubhanAllah now I'm look to myself with my son how many times I said of not of how, how many times I really punished him Maybe it's like daily act we, we, we do with our children. But he said like 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ never said anything to him. So we really need to study how the Prophet ﷺ he used to teach the young brothers and sisters. He said, SubhanAllah, and this hadith also narrated, in, I think, in Muslim. And this is which really make us 
know about the, how the Prophet ﷺ used to teach. The Prophet ﷺ, and he's the Prophet. And Anas bin Malik, he's not even a kid, he's the servant of the Prophet. So he's the Prophet, he has the status, and the servant. He's the king of the Medina, and Anas, a kid. And he's the servant of the Prophet. He told him, go and do this. And he said, I don't. And he left. And he went to play, because he, like 10 years old. We're talking about 10 years old. So the Prophet وسلم, followed him to the market. And he caught him. And he said, do you go? And he's smiling. He said, yes, I will go now. So imagine like if you talking to your son and you tell him, go and do this. He said, no, I will not do it. What the next step you will do? Right away. So the Prophet sallallahu so, so easily, he ran away, doesn't want to do it. The Prophet ﷺ went after him, caught him, smiled on his face, and he said, can you do it? Yes, I will do it now. <laughs> so SubhanAllah, we, we need to think, I will not go like further on this subject, we need maybe once to sit and see how the Prophet ﷺ used to deal with the young Ummah, because we really need to return us and, 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 and teach ourselves before we teach them how to deal with the people. So the Prophet وسلم, with his smile, with his action, he taught Anas bin Malik, the narrator of this hadith. So sometimes, whatever you say to your children, it will not really get the same effect when they see you doing this thing. And wallahi, I, I, I notice it myself. Now, my son, two years and six months old, he can pray. And wallahi, ever, never, I didn't taught him how to pray. I didn't say like make ruku', make sujood, never, ever. I'll pray. Do you want to pray with me? No, no. Yes, yes. That's it. So, when I saw this is like actually working, but sometimes it doesn't work for me. I get angry like so easy. So I, 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 I thought like I have to work on myself first before I try to let my son behave right. I should behave right. That's why the scholars, they said, we have an issue with lying in our society. They said the problem, like all parents, they teach their kids, or they say, please don't lie. But they practice this lying in front of them. So for them, like, it's okay. My father do it, my mother do it, it's okay. You can't really live without it. So this is, this is the point that we should all think about. So I will go back to the hadith, I don't want to go like, spend all the time talking about something else. This hadith, that narrated by Anas radiallahu ta'ala, and he said, a Bedouin guy came to the Prophet sallallahu and he asked him about the last hour. He said, when the last hour will be? So the Prophet sallallahu answered him. He said, what do you prepare for it? And the Bedouin guy said nothing. But I love Allah and his messenger. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered him, he said, Anta ma'aman ahbabt. You 
will be with whom you love. So, first of all, this guy came to ask about something. <coughs> but he returned with something else, like really different than what he's asking for. So he was com coming asking about the sa'ah. Where is the, the last hour for this daily life, for this daily world? And the Prophet sallallahu provide him a different answer. Because when you come and ask, you should ask about something that will benefit you. If the sa'ah tomorrow or after tomorrow, it will not be important. But the important is what you prepare for it. So when the Prophet وسلم, said, when the Prophet وسلم, answered him, he realized that Bedouin guy, he didn't realize which one is important, the sa'a or what did you really prepare for the sa'a. So he answered him with the right question. He doesn't say, oh, you shouldn't ask about sa'a. You should ask about what you prepare for it. People will not really appreciate this kind of talk. So the Prophet وسلم, with his akhlaq, with his high and good manners, he said, what did you prepare for it? And the guy, he realized that he asked the wrong question. He said nothing. But I really love Allah and his Prophet. And the Prophet sallallahu just try to be easy with him, he said, Anta ma'am al So, I said, I told you I have a story with this hadith. Once I did a small talk about this hadith. And the masjid was full with people. It's just a hadith that you read. And subhanAllah, people was, like, they, they were really discussed between them. They said, we're really in trouble. The Prophet ﷺ said, Anta ma'aman ahbabt, and we really love dunya and love this people, like maybe they will get in trouble. So we don't really trust ourselves, like we love this dunya, we love some people, we think they will get in trouble, and we will be with them because we really like them. But subhanAllah, if you continue, and you see what the reporter of this hadith, Anas bin Malik, said about this hadith. He said, when the Prophet وسلم, said this hadith, the people of al Madinah they were so happy. Even I. When the Prophet وسلم, answered this Bedouin guy, we were super happy. So what the difference now? And I, I, I told people, I said, like, you shouldn't actually be really afraid. You should be, like, happy for this hadith. But because we realize, our, we realize, like, we don't really appreciate or love the Prophet Sallallahu as the, the Sahaba, with one Allah Ta'ala So they all know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in high status, and, and he do a lot of actions, a lot of good deeds, they will not reach. So when he said, you will be with the people whom you love, they know they will be with the Prophet ﷺ because they love the Prophet ﷺ more than anything else. But for us, we know we love this dunya. We love a lot of other people. And we don't trust ourselves. We say we love the Prophet ﷺ. We say we love Allah and His Prophet more than anything else. But do we really mean it? That's the question. So 
There is a lot of hadith actually confirm this meaning from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he narrated that uh, a guy came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked, what about men? He loves certain people, but, they, but his a'mal, his actions, will not let him be with them. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said he will be with them on the day of judgment, if he really loves them. So now, the question that the scholars, they ask, they said, is that applied to each one loves people? He said, no. That's only if you love someone and try to copy him and try to do as much as he do from his actions but your actions is like short shorten that his uh, actions then you will be with him because a lot of people they they love especially the the other nations they love their prophets but their their actions is like really different or if you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example, if you love this guy just because he's from a salihin, he's a pious, he's a good, <coughs> now you love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will put you with him. And if you love some bad people and you try to copy them, he will be with them even if their status is like lowest than yours. So that's thing we should keep it in our mind and think about it. So from the Iman is to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. And even the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you want to complete your Iman, three things. Love for the sake of Allah, hate for the sake of Allah, and men fi sabilillah, which is don't give for the sake of Allah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man ahabba lillah wa abhada lillah wa a'qa lillah wa mana'a lillah faqad istakmal al-iman. This is narrated by Abu Dawood. And he even said about how to find the sweetness of, of iman. He said, if you really want to test that the sweetness of Iman, you have to have three things. أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْكَ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا To love Allah and His Prophet more than anything else. And to love people for the sake of Allah and to hate to go back in kufr just like to hate to be thrown in the, in the fire so when you have this passion you love for the sake of Allah, you love Allah you love the Prophet وسلم, and you only consider loving people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you will test the sweetness of Iman that's why it's from oral Iman from the characters of Muslim is to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah and to be with the Salihin to be with the pious people with the good people and it's really help and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the, the people who gathered for his sake he said all, all friends all friends will be enemies on the day of judgment. Except who? Muttaqin. Al Akhilau. No ma idin ba'dum bi ba'dun adu. Illa al Muttaqin. So subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask us to be with the Muttaqin. Because 
if you love someone and he's from not from al muttaqin he will be your enemy in the day of judgment and this is the quran also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wasbir nafsaka ma'a alladhina yad'una rabbahum bil ghadati wal 'ashi yuriduna wajha just make yourself he said wasbir that means just have a patience to put yourself with those who only seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's not easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it's, it's not easy to be with the pious people sometimes it's very easy to go outside to hang out with the wrong people spend time it will go like so easy but to bring yourself to the masjid to be with the good people to hear the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is not easy but it helps it helps me and you and everyone else you hear up one word maybe it will change your life and sometimes like keep this reminder going it's helped you to be firm on, on, on your religion because it's, it's outside it's, it's, it's really it's, sometimes it's difficult <clears throat> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pour the sabr, the patience of us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the trial that we are in the fitna outside if you go far than the masajid, far than the good company, you will have time. And you have to spend this time one way or another. And you will spend it with the wrong people. So you have to have the patience to keep yourself with a good company. To not let yourself get in trouble in this dunya and the hereafter. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also he he mentioned this hadith. He said, "This is hadith in Sahih Muslim." He said, "A man visit his brother in a different village, and Allah subhanahu wa taala sent him an angel." sitting between the two villages and he asked him, why you are going to this guy do you have any favor on him he said no do you have any money no nothing I, I just love this person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing else so the, the angel the angel answered him and he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send me to let you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you just because he loves his brother for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu also said if you love someone for Allah's sake just let him know that you are loving him because it's it will make the, the love more firm and the mawadda keeps the mawadda between you and he said you will not enter Jannah until you will love each other and you will not love each other SubhanAllah, the salam is like really important people they get angry like if you forget or if you don't even see them sometimes and you all have experience with this People they said like the shaitan subhanallah he always try to take the advantage of this moment if you forget or if you don't do salam he will go to this he said like why he didn't do salam to you maybe he maybe someone said something bad about him oh he's sitting with this guy this guy maybe said and subhanallah it's a grow like it's a start like very small in the mind and it needs it, it, it just like take one salam that you miss and you will go to your brother and he said like oh you are really different now 
you are not my friend, you are talking bad about me. He said, like, we didn't say anything. He said, no, you're talking with this guy about me. He said, like, subhanAllah. That's why it's, it's not recommended to have any private talk in front of people. If you have private talk, go along and talk each, with each other. Don't whisper in, in front of people because the shaitan will take the advantage of this moment. And the Prophet ﷺ did this actually in many hadith, like especially with Ma'ab in Jabal. When he called him, he said, Inni la uhibk. Once Ma'ab in Jabal, he was with the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, Oh Ma'ab, I love, I love you, I like you. And this is how the Prophet ﷺ did. And when people actually like each other and they, they become witnesses for each other. Once the Prophet Sallallahu was uh, standing with the Sahaba and the Janazah came and the Sahaba was talking so good about the, the guy and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Wajabat which means it's confirmed three times and then the other Janazah came and the Sahaba was talking bad about the guy. So he said, Wajabat, three times, confirmed. And the Sahaba, they said, like, you said confirmed for both of them. I said, yes. For the first guy, the heaven confirmed for him. And for the, the second one, the hellfires confirmed for him. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he said this, the Sahaba, they said, but why, why you said this? You, you, do you know something about them? He said, no, you are the witnesses of Allah in earth. So if we know the guy as a good guy, sometimes we may make mistakes, but generally we will not judge people without rules or at least the Sahaba will not do this if there is no evidence of it but now like you just need to say one bad word about anyone and it will be everyone will know about it and subhanAllah this is a very important point you can't talk about your brother or anyone especially your brother if you don't have evidence, if you don't have the fact in front of you. People say, you don't know. Yes, it's okay to be careful when you're dealing with a guy that he's well known as a bad guy, but you don't say something bad about someone unless you really know this is right. And you don't say it if there is no maslaha, there is no benefit of it. For example, you know a guy as a thief. You will not go like outside and say, oh, this guy is a thief, this guy is a thief. Actually, you're helping the shaitan on your brother. You go to him, ask him to make tawbah. He didn't leave him because it will be very difficult for him to go back and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're talking badly about him because he will be known in his community as a thief but if he steals more than one and you try to make your brothers aware about his actions now there is a benefit you have to protect your brothers if someone asked you about him Maybe he's getting married, asking a lady and the, the family asking about him. You should be uh, honest. honest with them. So again, it's very good point. And don't believe anyone say anything bad about your brothers, especially the media. Like if they said, oh, these group of people, they do this and this and this. Wallahi, we don't know. I don't say they are right, 
and I don't say they are bad because we don't know we don't really know their situation and this is from the riba you make riba without even knowing you're talking about some people so badly but you just you just assume that and this is not right especially now all the media has, is like it's trying to push one one opinion on people so we can't we can't really we can't really uh, believe in it and Allah sometimes I see like there is two channels or two uh, websites each one describe the same incident in a different way. Just like I, I remember when, when it happens in, 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 in Egypt, like for Rabia. I, I, I still remember like the Arabia and the Jazeera. Jazeera they said like all, all the military army, they come with their uh, gun machines and, and they fire the places. And, and the Jazeera said, no, no. Uh, the Arabia they said no, all the Ikhwan in, in, in their tents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the truth, but I can't really judge on my, my brothers in, in any way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask me why they did this. He will ask me what yourself. If you want to make dua, always make dua to your brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the sulh. Let them become one nation again. And let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory to the right one, to, to the most pious person. I don't know the pious, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better than me. So I, I mentioned that because like a lot of brothers they have, like they even fighting here for some groups in, in fighting in, in Syria, they don't know. And both of them, they don't know them. They said, oh, this group is good? No, no, this group is good. And because the, like, both groups, like, they are fighting, so they brought the fight here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows better. If you have kind of these discussions between you and your brothers, said, Wallahi, we can't judge. We can't judge on people, especially through the media these days. And we just make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put out the fitna between them and make them brothers again. And we are brothers. Just make dua to Allah to give victory to the right one. That's it. So, uh, any questions, Shaykh, for the hadith? Yes. Do you conclude about the, the guide, like a like a guidelines that help us to uh, gain the love of the uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, yes. how to know the manifestations? Uh, what are the manifestations of that? Okay. Two things. Actually, first of all. من أحب قوما اتبعه. If you love people, you will follow their sunnah. If you love Allah, you will follow the rule of Allah. If you love the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, you will follow his sunnah. This is from one side. If you want Allah سبحانه وتعالى to love you, then in the hadith of Qudsi that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said There is nothing That My servant Will offer Better than doing the obligatory things Doing the five time prayers This is Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made as obligatory It's the best thing And then said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith and if you offer more extra nawafil, it will bring you closer to Allah until He will love you. 
and when he will love you he will be with you he will be with you in each situation when you use your hand when you walk when you see when you hear and he said if you ask Allah he will answer your call if you ask him anything he will be with Allah whatever you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover it for you and I just remember a hadith it's actually subhanallah mentioned both even though there is uh, some debate of the hadith but it's for me it's authentic and I think Bani said it's authentic as well he said three people uh, three things three things it's a duty to Allah to do it the first one he will not make the one who has share in Islam equal to the one who has nothing and this is confirmed in Sharia so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never put the one who has nothing, no a'mal, no actions, equal to the one who has a'mal. This is one thing. And the second one, whoever relies on Allah, yatawalla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever relies on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depends on Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not put someone like have a control over it. no one you rely on Allah you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never will anyone will force you to do anything and the other one is if you love someone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put you with him so the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith three things it's uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala duty. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do it. If uh, if you have share in Islam, He will not put you with someone without share. And if uh, you rely on Allah, no one will control you. And if you love someone, you will be with Him. And again, I said, if you love someone, you will follow his sunnah, you will follow his a'mal and now there is one question I want to ask you how to deal with non-Muslim people is it okay to like them is it okay or not to like like like, like them like. like or like like their actions Yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually said the rule and it's a Quran. La yanhaakum Allahu an al ladina lam yuqatilukum fi al-dini wa lam yukhrijukum min diyarikum an tabaruhum wa tuqsitu ilayhum. Inna Allah yuhibu al-muqsitin. Inna ma yanhaakum Allahu an al ladina qatilukum fi al-dini wa akhrajukum min diyarikum wa zahiru ala ikhrajikum an tawallahum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in two ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't ask you to avoid or to stop with the, with the people who doesn't who doesn't fight you in the religion. But actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourage us to be just, <coughs> to be to treat them good. In Allah He said, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to avoid those who fight you in the religion and they want to harm you no ever be awliya to them no ever be friend with them so this is the rule if they try to attack us if they want to uh, attack this religion we will never like them but whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said إِلَّا أَن مِنْهُمْ like for example, this guy, he's a very good doctor. I like this in him, but I don't like his what he believes in, because it's wrong. This guy, he's, he's a good soccer player. 
he's a good uh, guide in, 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 in this life. He's like spend and do th good things. So these certain things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you can pick and like it. But whatever bad, you will not like it. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. yes. um, like you that uh, Allah subhanahu wa says, uh, I don't know if it's Hadith or Quran, Allah says that if you cover someone's um, app in the dunya, Allah will cover your apps in the app. Again? I have means that you're like a witness. So you cover your brother's brother weakness here in the yes. dunya, and Allah will cover your mistakes in the after. I didn't mention this hadith. No, no, I, I'm just asking. This, yes. is, this is a, in a hadith. Or a this is a hadith. This is a hadith. So that's why I'm not. Man sadara musliman fi dunya, sadara Allah fi akhirah. If, and this is actually, it's, it's good. If you, if someone does a mistake, and you really think he will repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then just try to cover his mistake for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he may return to Allah and sometimes you think like subhanallah we all even though we, we, we are not allowed to judge people because in al hukmu illallah the judgment is only belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we judge people but who, who we are to judge people. We, we all fall with mistakes, but we don't see our mistakes. And with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one sees our mistakes. Otherwise, no one will respect anyone else. So we, we know our mistakes, but we don't see it. We see only the mistakes on others. And we judge them in extra. So he said, like, oh, this guy when when he when he had money he did do this and this, and when the money like finished, he just like returned to the masjid. So subhanAllah, who, who, who are you to do this? Maybe he goes to another masjid. So subhanAllah, we all have <coughs> some times when we go a little bit. Wow. and then we remember and return and if we want to look and search for mistakes the only mistakes we are allowed to search for it's our mistakes not the others mistakes Wallah is not allowed to follow the awrat <coughs> the mistakes of the others and even the Prophet وسلم, said Whoever search for the mistakes in the awad for others, Allah Himself will search for His awad, for His mistakes. <coughs> and if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala follow your mistakes, everyone will knows about it. So, this is the promise. If you searching for the others' mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will search for yours. So, alhamdulillah, yes, uh, uh, we, we talk a lot about different subjects tonight, but inshallah, it's, I think it's each subject it, it needs a one halaq, especially for the, the children, how to deal with your children. I, I really want wants to stop and, and see how the Prophet Sallallahu used to treat uh, the family, the wives, the children and the young uh, Muslims at that time and we take the ibrah, the lesson from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu So any other question? Okay, I'll say this, 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 I'll say this,